So what is the most important thing you can do to improve your portraits, especially in Photoshop? Clean your monitor. Once you do, you'll find yourself not removing the blemishes that were actually impossible to remove. Hi there, this is Unmesh and today I'm going to share with you five little things that you can do to instantly improve any portrait in Photoshop in addition to the monitor trick. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you wish to download and follow along with any of the photos, you know what to do. Check the links in the description. The first and the very first important thing that we can do to improve any portrait is to create attention and draw the attention towards the subject. There are many ways we can do this and let me just share with you one of the examples. Here we have the background layer. I'm just going to press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy of that. Now before applying any filter, what do we do? We go to filter, convert for smart filters. Why? So that whenever we apply a filter, we can change the values later. Now let's go to filter, the classic camera raw filter. And with the new masking features inside of camera raw, this has gotten so much more easier. First of all, let's mask in the subject. So with the masking section activated, we are just going to click on subject. That's it. It automatically masks the subject. Now you can do whatever you want here. So I'm going to make the subject a bit brighter like so. 0.25 is fine. You can also play with the shadows, the blacks. So let's quickly play with those. Also, I feel that we can make the subject a bit warmer slightly. And also let's reduce the greenish tone in her skin by taking the tint to the right hand side like so. Once we are done with that, you can also try some effects by scrolling down and trying increasing or decreasing the clarity. This helps. And also the texture, maybe a bit of dehaze to add more dimension. Now we have brightened the subject and our attention goes towards the brighter parts of the image. But to make the subject stand out even more and brighter in comparison to other things, let's also darken the background. Let's click on create a new mask and select background. And with the background, let's scroll down and decrease the exposure here. And as soon as we do that, our attention goes more towards the subject. Now the background colors seem a bit off. By the way, you can also play with the whites here and the blacks. See how they work with the background. See what looks good to you here. And then let's scroll down. Increase the temperature. Now this looks good also the tint. You can also scroll down to have less detail in the background. Just decrease the clarity. There you go. To make the background a bit more softer. Now to draw more attention towards the subject, keep in mind, this is all a game of attention. We can apply vignettes. Let's come back to the edit section, scroll down and in the effects section, there is the vignette option. If you don't see extra options for vignetting, you can click on this arrow right there. More options open up. Let's take the vignetting to the left to darken the edges. By the way, here's what I do. I take it all the way to the left to see what it's doing and then also decrease the feather and then control these settings. I'm going to increase the roundness, play with the midpoint so that it's closer to the subject like so. This works. Maybe something like so and then play with the feather. There you go. This is something. Also, I want the highlights to show up. So let's increase the highlights all the way up and then control the vignetting amount. So let's keep it slightly like so. Maybe minus 26 works. Hit OK. And just doing this, we were just playing. Here is the before. See, attention is not going towards the subject. Here's the after. More attention towards the subject and we are just getting started. They say eyes are the windows to the soul and this is one of my favorite things that you can do to draw more attention towards the soul of the person. And it's actually one of the easiest to do. All you do is create our favorite curves adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Take it up like so. Select the mask and press Ctrl or Command I to invert it. Now simply take the brush you want to make sure you take the soft round brush, zoom into the eyes, notice where the catch light is. So in this eye, the catch light is right here, right? Now make the brush roughly the size of the eyeball or a little smaller, something like so. And then just dab on the opposite side of the catch light. So if the catch light is here, you will dab here. Make sense? You want to make sure the foreground color is white and just dab. There you go. Look how interesting that looks. Similarly, let's do the same here. 
there you go. Now we need to remove the extras. So let's make the brush smaller and you can easily do that with the square bracket keys. And with black as the foreground color, just erase the extras. To make sure you have erased everything, you can hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the mask to see all the extra things removed. Then hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the mask again to bring everything back. Similarly, let's do it right here. Let's check. There's that area left. There you go. Now when you zoom out, have a look at the difference. This is crazy good. You can always control this by double clicking on the symbol of the adjustment layer and you can take it down or up depending upon how much you want it there. On top of that, you can apply blend if to it. There are so many things you can do, but this is just one of the basic things that you can easily do to draw more attention towards the eyes. Here's the before, here's the after. Oftentimes, you're going to have some color issues with your portraits. And one of the easiest ways to fix it is using the hue saturation adjustment layer. By the way, the hue saturation adjustment layer got a very big update recently, but the principles are exactly the same as it was before. As you can see in this portrait, wonderful pose, but there are these slight instances of greenish tint all over the skin that is just not looking right. And there's just so much difference. Here the skin tone is fine. Here it is too green. Here it is too green. In the dark areas, it's okay. There are these patches of green that just don't look good. Here's how to fix it. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose hue saturation. You can go to the green or use the hand here and just click on one of those areas. Don't worry, we will adjust that later. Now, since this color is more closer to yellow, it automatically selected that. Simply increase the hue and saturation all the way to the right hand side to see which areas are being affected. And then we will play with this range here. So let's increase it. And let's slowly and gradually increase it on the left hand side. This is targeting everything. By the way, you can make it narrower to see which areas are being affected. Now let's move it. We want a little bit of that area as well. There you go. This is fine. Now let's increase the gap between the sliders towards one edge. This just makes the transition smoother, like so. On the right hand side, it is all green, so we don't need to worry about it as much. Now let's double click on the slider for saturation and hue to reset it. Now let's adjust these. If we take it to the left, it automatically fixes that issue. You can also decrease the saturation if you feel like it, but I feel this is fine. You can also play with the lightness, but just changing the hue fixes everything. Here is the before. See all that green there? Here is the after. Everything is just so darn much better. Maybe minus 16 is best. You can decrease the saturation slightly and also increase the lightness a bit. Here's the before and here is the after. And you can make changes according to your liking. Now, as we are doing that, it's also affecting the background a little bit. So how do we fix it? Simple. You can either use the brush to paint in areas where you need it or just create a selection of the subject. So select any of these three tools, the object selection, quick selection or the magic wand and at the top, click on select subject. You want to make sure sample all layers is checked so that it can sample the layers beneath. Once we have the selection of the subject, you can actually delete this mask and with the selection still active, click on the mask button. You could have just filled it with black, inverted it, so many ways of doing the same thing, but this mask keeps it limited just to the subject. Again, here is the before, see all that green and here is the after, easily easily fixed. The next little thing you can do is simply retouching. And there are so many ways you can approach this. You can take your time to remove all the blemishes by creating a brand new layer, selecting something like the remove tool and zooming in and slowly and gradually circling all the blemishes and removing them one by one. And then using dodging and burning or frequency separation and take your time with it. Keep in mind, nothing beats manual retouching because retouching is an art. And if you don't have a lot of time, you can also use some automatic techniques. A few videos ago, I shared with you a technique where we blurred the skin areas. We created some artificial texture and painted that back in just to make it look realistic. And we also created an action for it. You can watch that video right here to learn how to create that action. But I have a gift for you. You can actually download one of those actions which has options. So let's go to the actions panel by going to window actions. 
or you can click right here if it's already open for you. You'll be able to download this Piximperfect Pro Fast Skin Retouching. It will be a demo action because it will only have a one of these actions. Keep in mind, if you are a Piximperfect Pro member, you'll have access to all of these actions where you don't even have to do anything. Just play the action. It will do everything for you automatically. Piximperfect Pro also has a complete guide on how to best use all of these actions. And if you want to check out Piximperfect Pro, it's a platform that I created to master Photoshop from start to finish and even beyond. With more than 100 lessons, maybe 120 right now, you learn Photoshop by mastering the concepts so you never have to memorize the steps and everything is hands-on. There are more than 200 practice files that you can download and follow along. And if you have any doubts for any of the lessons, there's a dedicated area to ask a question and we make sure that we answer all of them. So when you can, do check out Piximperfect Pro only on piximperfect.com. Back to the video, you'll have this particular action, skin retouch with options. Select that and play it. That's all. It's going to ask you the median value. All you have to do is to decrease it and slowly and gradually increase it and stop at the point where all of the blemishes and the ups and downs of the skin go away. So at this point, it is still there. I'm going to slowly increase it even more. At around 90, everything goes away for this image. Hit OK. Now the texture is going to show up. At this point, the texture is too big for the skin. So I'm going to apply a texture, maybe 1.4 and hit OK. Now high pass will show up here. Keep on increasing it and stop at just the point where you start to see the ups and downs of the skin. So I'm seeing it right now. So maybe at about 2.4. This is fine. Hit OK. And now the layer style dialog box will show up with blend if applied. This is for removing it from the dark areas and the bright areas. You can extend it even more. Maybe this was already fine for the dark areas as well. You can extend it accordingly. This is pretty good. Hit OK once you're satisfied. And now all you got to do is to just paint. That's all. Paint with white. See, everything is automatically going away. At this point, I feel the texture is too much. Let's open this group, go to the texture, and I'm going to decrease the opacity to maybe 40. Hit Enter. And let's paint the rest of the areas. Select the mask here and just paint this. See how easy it is to fix all that? Keep in mind, this is a quick and dirty method. This is not something I recommend if you're doing something high end, but it gives you quick results. Let's have a look at the before and after. Here is the before. See all that? And here is the after. And again, I would decrease the opacity of this because this can be too much. So maybe at around 76, is a nice number to be at before, after. And just a little bit of retouching, this automatic action goes a long way. Now, if you want some high-end results, but also automatic, you can also use some skin retouching plugins. And I highly recommend the Retouch For Me plugin series. All you have to do is with the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy. Let's go to Filter, Retouch For Me. By the way, you can check them out absolutely for free. I'll leave a link to the trial version in the description. Retouch for me and Retouch for me heal for removing the blemishes. There are a series of these plugins for different purposes and it automatically removed all the blemishes. There is this sensitivity slider. If you reduce it, less and less blemishes will be removed. And if you increase it, more and more blemishes will be detected and removed. Check Make Mask and click on Apply. When you do that, a separate layer is created with just the blemish removed areas. Here's the before. You see all those blemishes in the forehead and the cheek? And here is the after. All of that gone, even from the body. Here's the before. See all those blemishes? And here is the after. Everything gone. On top of that, you can also do dodging and burning, high-end automatic. For that, with the topmost layer selected, press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E to create a stamp visible layer at the top. Now let's go to filter and this time retouch for me, dodge, burn. And again, it automatically did all the dodging and burning. This is so good. And you can choose how much you want. This is nothing. And this is way too much. So let's find a middle ground, maybe 110. Check soft light layer and hit apply. Here we have the same gray layer dodging and burning style that we do in Photoshop and just change the blend mode from normal to soft light. And have a look. Take a look at the overall before and after. Here's the before and here is the after. And it's all high end too. I've also created an action that just with one click applies a series of Retouch For Me plugins. But again, keep in mind, you need to have those plugins for that action to work. You can know more about it in this video. And just to share with you how it works, I'm going to open the Pix Auto Retouch Actions. 
click on basic and play it. As you can see, it is automatically doing all the retouching for me and creating all of these layers. And once it is done, this is crazy good. Here is the overall before and here is the after. And keep in mind, this is all one click. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link to the highest discount for retouch for me and you can check that out in the description. The final little thing you can do to make your portraits instantly better, at least for this video, that is adding dimension to the hair. And again, this is also very easy to do and there are a few tricks to make it even better. First of all, click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves, our favorite. Create a point in the middle and just take it up like so. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I to invert it. Now take the brush with white as the foreground color. You want to make sure you have the soft round brush selected. Just make the brush larger and dab, that's all. Like so. Similarly, right here. Dab in the areas where you think you want to add shine, where there is already a little bit of shine. Maybe here, maybe there, here as well. Also in these areas, add that shine. Similarly there. Don't worry about leaking right now. Now that we have created a preliminary shine area, I'm also going to add some shine here as well. Let's double click on the right hand side of the layer. Let's take it away from the dark areas by taking the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. And again, this can be harsh. So you can hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click on the slider to break it apart and take it apart like so. And just by doing that, this becomes so much more better. Hit OK. Now there might be some additional extra areas, so select the mask, take the brush and this time black as the foreground color and just erase the extras. From the outside here, from the skin areas here, not a big deal. Similarly here as well. Once you have done that, you can also add some color to it. Yes, you heard that right. Just open up the curves properties, click here. You can make it brighter or darker, up to you. But also you can go to other channels like blue. If you want to add some yellow, Take the blues down from here or here. I leave that to you. So I'm going to take it down like so. See that yellowness that it has added? We can also go to the green channel and reduce it to make it more magenta-ish. See that tone? That looks really, really nice. You can also go to the red channel and experiment, increase it or decrease it to see what it does. And just with that, you can create a variety of effects with different color highlights and add an overall dimension to the hair. Here's the before. Not so much dimension. Here's the after. And again, if you think it is too much, you can always decrease the opacity. So those were the five little things you can easily do to instantly improve any portrait with Photoshop. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, I have a personal favor to ask. Of course, I would love for you to make sure to hit the like button, subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. But also, I really want to know from you, what would you like to watch next? Is there any topic that you're having trouble with? Is there any area of Photoshop that you need a little more help with? What is that area? Let us talk about it in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. What can I do?